So I know a lot of people have done simple tool videos. I've even done some simple tool videos. But as a blacksmith, I haven't really talked about that because I'm not really one to talk about it. I'm really the kind of person who should be talking about it. There are other people who make a much better argument about simple tool projects and making an earning or earning a living getting started earning enough so that you can purchase bigger and better tools for blacksmithing or just in general working with metal one of them uh, something I've learned from Alex Steele was a simple leaf keychain and today I wanted to make a, a leaf keychain for you uh, I've typically used 3 8 inch square bar and so this is that's what this is. Uh, this I just picked up at Home Depot yesterday. Yes, that was yesterday. Here I have a picture of the price tag. $6.87 for 3 feet of 3 8 inch square bar. Now personally, I think that's pretty expensive compared to what I have paid elsewhere uh, at a, an actual uh, an actual steel yard, I've purchased half inch square bar for about that same price, if not cheaper than that. So it's it's kind of expensive if you go to find steel for projects at, at Home Depot. But when you're starting out, that's how you can get started, not making as much of a profit, but you're also still figuring out what you're doing. You're learning the process, you're learning the techniques. But a leaf keychain, especially once you get good at it and you develop a, as I have, a more simplified keychain, you don't use very much of this at a time. That's a benefit. You see, even though this is expensive by comparison to what you should be able to pay, when you break that price down into per inch price, that's about 20 cents per inch. 20 cents an inch? And a keychain, a leaf keychain can use uh, an inch, maybe an inch and a half each. No more than two inches. That's a maximum of 40 cents in materials. And the only other consumable you have is fuel for your forge, whether that's propane, charcoal, or whatever it is. You have fuel for your forge, and then you have your time. You don't need any abrasives. You don't need any saw blades if you have some sort of cutting tool. Okay. I have, uh, for my Harbor Freight anvil, I have a cutoff hardy that I made. For my regular anvil, I have, that's a punch. That's a punch. Where's my chisel? There you are. For a regular anvil, I have a handheld chisel. Okay, You can get one of those at Home Depot or Lowe's as well. Or you can make your own. So the point is, it's a simple project, it requires very few tools, and when I say very few tools, I mean you need something to cut it with, whether that's a hot cutting tool or a hacksaw. You can get a hacksaw for about five bucks at Walmart, if that. You need some sort of hammer. Cross peen is great, ball peen is just fine for what I, I do and for what a lot of people do. Uh, I use both because I use this to shape it and then I use this to I use this to forge it and this to bend the final form kind of like a spoon or a bowl. I generally use some sort of wire brush. Here's a wire brush. Here's a wire brush. I definitely prefer this. And you need a, a forge and an anvil. I recommend not using a Harbor Freight anvil for this. I like my railroad rail anvil. Works quite well for it. And I don't really worry about messing it up or denting it because it's actually still fairly hard. So I'm going to start into this with a new bar of steel just to prove to you that this bar of steel I just got I can make a leaf out of. And it's not going to take very much. First things first, I'm going to clarify that this is three feet of steel. It is just barely over three feet of steel. 
So I'm going to call it 36 inches. I'm going to have to hold it here in the forge because I don't have a, a rest for it. So I'm just going to turn on the, the gas. The Hippopotta gas. Turn on my regulator. Get the forge hot. Also as tools, you'll need some form of tongs. These are 3 8 inch square jaw tongs or V-bit tongs that I made for uh, this particular stock. These work quite well and once you get down to a short section of bar like this, you'll definitely need some tongs to hang on to this. Once you break the leaf free of the parent bar, you will need some sort of tongs to hold on to it, and, or as you hold on to the parent bar, you'll need some sort of tongs to bend it over and twist it off so you can hold it, but also you'll need some tongs to hold the leaf. I like to hold the leaf with these and then twist the end of the, uh, the stem essentially to create the loop with a, a second pair of tongs. You can use needle nose pliers to do this or any other sort of pliers. The only thing I would recommend in that case, grind or file off the teeth. Make sure that they have smooth jaws, or in this case, these are scrolling tongs, small scrolling tongs. They have rounded jaws so that they won't mar the surface of your workpiece. First thing I'm gonna do is forge a, as abrupt of a taper on the end as I can. set down by isolating about a cube of material, as Alex Steele would say, and then half on half off the anvil over here. That's just my mark. Now I'm going to isolate the material by working on two sides only. I find my mark right here, back and forth. opposite side and on opposing corners. This is best done with somewhat sharp of a corner on your anvil. So as you can see there, we have a set down here and here, and then here and here. So that's one, two, three, four sides. But for each set down, it's only one and two, one and two. That keeps you from working this on the anvil while you're working this. Now I'm gonna continue working this back and forth. small and 
start rounding it up. But I'm actually going to want to go a little smaller up here. Come back to the near side. I'm going to force this down a bit more. small. Come back to the corners, knock them down, forge around. If this looks slightly faceted, that's fine because having a bit of that faceted look makes it look kind of woody, like it's organic. That's looking pretty good. Straighten out my bar here. Next heat, we're gonna come straight to the corner here and forge that down. This is about the time when a cross peen is one of the more useful hammers to have for this process. Because I'm gonna flatten it a bit, then I'm gonna turn it around to use the cross peen to draw the leaf widthwise. Flatten it, then cross beam, draw it out with wise. That. With cross beam, you can also forge just on one side of the leaf and just on the other side of the leaf. To create a fuller. Bring that in. See that ridge? I formed that ridge just with a cross peak. Joey Vandersteeg, I believe, has done leaves this way, except with a rounding hammer. Alex Steele does it the same way with a rounding hammer. Cross peens are much more common. You can actually find them. And the cross bean is a fuller, which can be used to create different forms. What I typically do is I come back in just to make it consistent. I will come back in after drawing it out with a round bar and use that as a fuller, which evens it up. That was bad. Which evens it up and smooths it out. Okay, one of the things you can do is when you're happy with that, you can also come in and embellish it with a bit of a chisel. I like to do veins coming out. basically done. This was a cold chisel that I just rounded the, uh, the edge on so that it wouldn't actually cut through, it would just create an indentation. leaf and most of the stem. The reason for that is I want all of this to not scale up too much or get too hot while I focus all of my heat down here. I want this thing to have residual heat and I want this to get hot right here. Let's 
heating up. You can see that the stem is hot. I'm going to cool the stem off. Let the heat come into the parent bar. Okay. So now, I'm going to bend it away, and I'm going to rotate it around. doing there is just creating a scroll that twists off into a nice little curl. Set the parent bar aside. I can even come back with a hammer if I want to. Clean that up. Roll it a little further in. Try not to mess with it too much. There's a little curl. Back in the fire. I actually missed a step right here. I was supposed to, I repeat, I was supposed to form and dish the leaf before twisting it off of the parent bar. I forgot that. Do as I say, not as I do. So we want to do that. We want to do this while we still have it attached to the parent bar because it's easier to hold it. We can uh, tuck it into our, between our legs without having to use a tong clip. But in this case, we're going to come over here, put the leaf side down. Sorry, we don't actually need the tong clip or to hold it between our legs. We're going to dish it down to where the leaf side is facing up. You can bend the tip over, it's a little too much. a nice form. Now we can wire brush it. Make sure that's all clean. Turn it around. We can wire brush that right now if we want. We're going to stick that in back in the fire. So we have the stem back in the fire now. It won't take very long to heat up. And this is the point where we're going to end up using two tongs or two needle nose pliers, two metallic utensils that we can hold it and grip it and manipulate it with. This facing outward, I'm going to twist that, bend the stem down away from the leaf, and then rotate it back up into place. Like so. I hope you caught most of that. because that produces scale, the wire brush it. If it's not perfectly squared up, to your liking, you can twist that around a bit. That looks pretty good to me.
keychain. I shut the forge down for a minute so we can talk about this. I used, I have this flush on the anvil, okay? My measuring tape and my, my bar of steel are flush on the anvil. And up here we have lost about one and a quarter inches. That's it. That's about 25, less than 30 cents, 25 cents of material that we've used to make a keychain. A keychain which I personally sell for $12. And this is the style I'm liking, the one that I'm doing. I actually took a little too much material for the loop there. Uh, I, my favorite keychains I've made so far were actually made from this. I made them a couple days ago. This is a nail, a 3 8 shank nail, which equates to, it, it's just a 3 8 inch round bar. I obviously didn't use this for any part of the nail. I had already used that portion for, uh, I think I had used it for a hook for something for my mom. But here's a nail. This is reclaimed material. You can see how rusty it is. These were in part of our fence that we had, our, uh, our chain link fence essentially that we had around our backyard. So reclaimed material, 3 8 inch nails. But I also have 3 8 inch round bar, and you can get that from Lowe's or Home Depot for pretty cheap. These can be used to make a very nice little keychain with a small loop. This one, like I said, is actually a bit large. You can see this is chunky. That's a chunky loop for how small this is. Nice simple project. Few tools. I personally use two hammers, an anvil, a forge. I used a, a fullering bar, which is just a one inch round bar. I could have done that entirely with my, my cross beam, and I used a chisel to put in the details, which you can make yourself or repurpose from an old cold chisel or something else. And then some tongs or, if you had them, uh, needle nose pliers, just grind off the, the teeth file down or grind off the teeth so they don't mark your your project that's it